everybody and welcome back to Baby Studios. Um, I've had an obsession lately and it's called watercolor. For a while I've been saying, no, I don't do watercolor, I don't do watercolor. But recently, like in October for my birthday, I went on a, on a vacation and I'm thinking, what can I take with me for the train trip that we did and for driving in the car that I could have really quickly paint and just entertain myself, you know, uh, even in the hotel room because I'm always trying to do creative stuff. And I said, watercolor. I went to Walmart and I got a little watercolor set for traveling, which was only like, I don't know, it's under $20, totally worth the investment. And I did tons of watercolor and I wanted to bring you guys a tutorial of how I have self-taught myself. I saw a couple videos on YouTube um, and I want to show you how fun it is and you really don't need to have a lot of artistic um, background. We're just going to have fun. I do suggest you get a high pigment watercolor not the traditional ones that the kids have for school and stuff like that because they're really light um but something like this and then you make yourself a little cheat sheet of all the colors how they are and it goes really really well with these dark colors you can lighten them with more water but we're, we're going to go through the process and um i'm also a little picasso inspired lately so we're going to do this piece so get yourself, you know, reference materials from a magazine, from a book, and, and you know, just experiment. So let's get started. Um, Dee's going to move the camera now so you guys can see me from the back angle. And all right, let's get started. Let me also show you, this is the kind of paper that I'm using. It's premium watercolor pad. Okay, it's real thick. It's acid free. Get a good, good paper so that it doesn't saturate and get all messy. Um, another suggestion is to put clear tape all around the edges so that they don't um, um, ruffle. You could you could you could step in and say, um, you see, getting. You, you're getting a little edge. But I'm just gonna use well, yeah, you know what? I'll use this one. Okay. So the way that I I saw on YouTube of how to do watercolors is they always suggest you start off sketching your image with a pencil. Okay. So I'm just gonna roughly. I'm going to do this image. I'm just going to roughly sketch it. So she has like a face. You know, you know, this is Picasso, so there's no rules here, okay? I'm just going to do, I'm going to do what I see. It almost looks like an angel to me, so I'm going to go with that vibe, okay? I apologize for the noise that you might hear. It is my fan. I'm inside the studio, and as you guys know, it's South Florida. You know, it's nice out, but... It's still hot. I'm getting a cold front tonight, hopefully. Um, so as you can see, I'm just being, I'm not being very deliberate. I'm just kind of following the things that are on, on the picture, the lines that are on the picture. I'm following the lines. And it's going to be close, close to, close to it. And then um, we'll start adding paint. That's the fun part. Okay, so I pretty much have the design that he did, Picasso. I love him. Um, let's do the face. The face is just this and another one and kind of like a smile, a closed eye, an eye over here, and then he did some lines, okay? So watercolor pens are, are delicious. They have a reservoir where you put water on the bottom and you could squeeze them and the water comes out through the brush, but I like to not do that. I like to put water on a little plate over here, and then I use, I bought a bunch of these, but you can get away with just using one brush. It's very user friendly, so I'm gonna use my skinny one. Okay, and I'm gonna just, what you need to do is take your brush, <clears throat> dip it in the water, and then find your color. So we're gonna go, with our brown first okay here's my brown and as you can see i have them all referenced over here and i'm going to do her face see how watery it is it's real real watery right now but as you spread it out it starts it starts getting different tones of paint if you want to make it darker you put it over here and you start noticing that you can make it a little darker Okay, so we're gonna make this side of the face a little darker. See? Just let, just experiment. It is totally, 
totally fun to, to try new things. I was very hesitant to do watercolors because it's, it's hard to have control. But I was wrong. I was wrong. I will admit it's hard for me to say I was wrong. So now I'm, my brush is almost dry. I'm going to dip into the mustard because I want the mustard to be a little more strong because it's going to go right here in, in the nose. Okay. And I am using um, the Picasso piece just as a reference. Notice how, I, how I'm spreading it all around like that and making it a little darker if I want to. Okay. We will go back. And you clean your brush, you can dip it in water or you can dip it in this dirty water. I, I go back and forth. I, I'm not very clean haha, when I do... Um, when I do watercolors, I just kind of do my own thing. Let me tell you, it's very therapeutic. Um, sometimes I do this just for creativity. Sometimes I do it because I need a distraction from life. Um, and stress, and, and to me it's very therapeutic. And sometimes I just do it because I want to try something new and, and be creative. Okay, I'm going to dip into the black now the dark color and I'm going to so I don't lose so you don't lose what you sketched come back in and do your your outline and don't be afraid my hands are a little shaky today um, but it's all good it's Picasso his stuff was very um, loose but with purpose in his own you know in his own way he had a purpose when he created things and there was hidden messages and all his work but we're just having a good time with art and we're learning about different mediums and and it doesn't matter it just doesn't matter it's just for fun and you can't um you can't argue that if you're having a good time it's all good so then i'm going back and i'm dipping into the brown and see how it's coming a little darker again using using the painting as reference it's not like i'm creating this it's just I'm trying to make Picasso's piece come to life with my own twist, all right? So I'm going to go back and get a little bit of mustard. I'm going to do this whole edge here. All right. Get a little bit more water. If you want this whole area to be mustard, you, you soften it with the water. See? And if you think you have too much, this comes with sponges. You can sponge off the water if you think it's too much. But I like it. I like the effect that it has. I just go in a back and forth motion. That's the way I've been learning how to do it. But um, you may pick up your own techniques and find a better way to do it. I love it. I love watercolors. And what I like the most about it is, um, again, it's very portable. And you could take it, like I told you, paint in the car. When, um, when you go camping, if you go camping, it's a great, great thing to have just to, just to doodle and play with. So while I'm waiting for the face to dry, because I am going to go back in and add, I'm going to go ahead and re redo my lines again with black. He has a lot of random colors, um, you know, sometimes they don't have, like, it doesn't make sense to me, but I appreciate all the um, artistic effort that he put into all his pieces. They were very profound, but, you know, we're not going for profound, we're going just for fun right now, okay? So I'm, I'm forcing again the lines that, that you saw. I'm going to go clean my brush and I'm going to dip it back in the mustard and I'm going to put mustard on this side. Okay. You guys hear that beautiful, that beautiful music? It's my cell phone. Somebody's texting me. It's all good. They shall have to wait till we're done. Persistent, persistent. It's a good text. It's a <laughs> okay. All right, so let's start adding fun colors, okay? He used blue here and he used all this with blue. Let's do it. 
let's get crazy and i'm gonna see i have three blues i think i'm gonna go with this like a sky blue it's not identical but we can lighten it okay turn your pieces upside down too it's all good you could do that um i just you know i just do my thing i play with it um i let it dictate what i'm gonna do maybe add the other blue a little bit of the other blue it's fun it's fun and since I'm going with like an angel vibe, I'm sorry to go back and forth, but that's the way I paint, okay? I like to do, I like to see the picture from different angles. I like to also bounce the colors around. So if I have blue there, he has blue there, he has blue here and here. So it bounces, so. Ah, this one's darker. Look how delicious that is. And notice when you go like this to the brush, the paper is so textured that if you like this effect, hey, I think that's pretty cool. I like it. Remember, there's no rules. No rules. Just have fun. And again, if it doesn't work, go back in, add more water. If that's, you know, you don't like it the way it was, I'm going to go back and do the mustard here. We had a lot of mustard in here. He had mustard here. But I'm going to add a little bit of the bright yellow so that the mustard is not so muted. See, this is a brighter yellow. We could come right here and add it under the chin just to give a little dimension. He also added a lot of brown, so I'm going to go in and do stuff like that. I'm going to go in here and put the brown again. But you notice how I'm not, I'm not making it watery and I'm not making it too dry. It's somewhere in the middle. And like I said, once you start playing with it, you'll realize when you need more water, when you need less water. But I, I encourage everyone to experiment. Experiment. Go back and forth. Mix colors. It's very forgiving. And when it's dry... You could always go back in and, and add more color too. Like I'm not really happy with the face, so um, I'm going to touch it up again. And I'm going to make a better face because my face came out kind of like a brutal. But you, you guys see, I just fixed what I didn't like for me. I'm just kind of adding designs. He had designs on it. I'm going to do brown lines, black lines. And now I'm going to clean my brush, try to clean my brush really good. I'm going to dip it into the white. So I want to have some white here. And I know that the white, um, if you, you know, since I have it mixed with a little bit of black, you get that grayish color. That's what I want. That's what I want. Want, want, want. And I'm going to go ahead and do again with the white all over here. Lots of water. See the tape stops it from, from going over. So let me get a little bit of, of my gray. Just a little bit. I want it to be muted. And then I want to add a little bit of blue. He just went crazy. He would just... I guess get in one of these trans, an artistic trans that I could totally understand. Um, I'm going to get the green now. I don't like the green he used. I'm going to use more of a muted green. I'm going to use like a, like an olive green, I guess. And I'm going to just kind of spill it. And then you see how wet it is. You sponge it. You sponge it. It is very abstract. And that's fun because there's no rules, okay? This is a little red. Mm, I kind of like this. So I'm going to put a little bit of that, um, what would you call that, the terracotta? Mm -hmm. A little terracotta there to add a little dimension to the face. I am going to add more of the, more of the mustard over here. Kind of make it intentional and go back into the brown I love how it looks like a flower 
like a flower yeah it's starting to look like a flower more than the angel vibe that I got originally but it's all good he did blue these lines were blue and I'm gonna I'm gonna go over my black and I'm gonna make it blue see how there's no rules people just go with the flow I'm gonna let some of my blue go into this line a little blue over right here it's very forgiving and we're only using Picasso as an inspiration it doesn't mean that you know this is gonna be you know you're copying him or anything like that you're just you're using it as inspiration that's why I say get a magazine get anything that you think you know inspires you and go from there he does a lot of a lot of crazy lines and I like it I like it clean your brush again I'm gonna put a little bit of that green up here do you see that I'm not really I'm not really doing anything really with with full intention it's more like with the flow and mixing of the colors and and you can go back in and do like the crazy lines that he does you can do intentional lines and make this one go up here let's go and get a little bit more of the blue and get it involved on this side so that you have your eye goes to many many sections of the piece not just one Let's do a little bit more of this mustardy, bright yellow. I like it. And when you mix it a little bit with the blue, it turns into that bright green, which I like as well. <laughs> I apologize for not um, coming on sooner with another video, but I'm really going to try to make it like a weekly thing. I know I always say that, but... Um, Things have been crazy this year with the whole COVID thing and um, now the holidays and so basically I'm doing this because I need to chill. <laughs> need to chill. I did a little, little Christmas wrapping, trying to get in the mood, so to speak, just with the immediate family, like my son and my husband and my parents, that's about it. But my vacation was really nice in October. We went to Shenandoah State Park, and um, it's quite beautiful. Oh my God, it's so pretty. And nobody around, so we felt safe. And um, that's where I got my watercolor obsession. And I'm happy with it. Again, I don't think I'm doing enough explaining, but as you guys could see, I'm just, what up, whatever color, speaks to me i'm kind of using it and um going with the flow so once you have this bright red up here it bothers me not to have it me it bothers me not to have it anywhere so i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna do parts of it add a little more red and if i think the paint is not diluted enough you come in with a little bit of water again and if i think it's still too strong Add it out, or brush it off, or sponge it off. That's the word. So you see now how it has bounced now? I like this one to be a little bit stronger. This one's a little lighter, but I want it darker. Okay. I'm just adding shadows now. Notice how his work has different colors mixed within each other a little bit of gray a little bit of blue he just you know he let the piece speak to him and and once you start doing this and you experiment over and over again you'll start getting the feeling like wait this needs a little bit more color here this needs a little bit more color there well it's pretty obnoxious i have to say <laughs> get the point people get the point come on I am BC right now.
Would you say it's coming together, dear? I would Do you like say it? It's coming together. Absolutely. Let's add a little more blue. And then I'm going to clean my brush again. But you notice how with watercolors, you really it's really easy to just clean your water. And if you feel it's dirty, just pour a little more of the water. You know? That way your brush is 100% clean. But there's no need to be. Like, normally when I paint with acrylics, I have to be cleaning my brush a lot. Because if you don't clean your brush, it will go on, the color will go on to the next brush and then you're gonna have a big mess but not so much with this okay so I want to reinforce the black again I love the fact that he uses these delicious intentional strong um and don't go you know don't lose your mind no never mind lose your mind <laughs> lose your mind get lost in your work that's the goal that's the goal okay you kind of want to get the feeling you feel after you work out you know after you work out because lord knows before the workout you're like Ugh. but when it's over you're proud of yourself for getting it done and you get those endorphins that kick in and this for me when i'm done painting and i see what i created and i said wow i made that oh it's i always get that wow that's cool i did that you know a sense of I was, I'm proud of what I did, and, and, um, and I, there's no rules, Lord knows we got plenty of rules in this world, so, I am not gonna allow myself to paint with rules, you know, a lot of people say that they can't paint, but, you know, they're quite surprised when they try, that's why children do so well with art, they don't think too much about it. Since you see a flower, I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage the flower. We're almost done. Let me clean my brush really good again. I wanna have some white. I wanna give her like a little bit of white up here. Maybe a little bit under the eye. Great. So use your fingers. Don't be afraid to use your fingers. And Picasso did a lot of, you know, a lot of paintings with so many colors. I like it. I like it. He's a genius. For me. He inspires me a lot. A lot of his work is delicious. So go back with the white. And it adds like, like an aging effect almost. Don't wet it too much. You just want to be able to. I don't know. Did if you can zoom in like that so that it can see all the texture that you get from it. So I'm gonna do a little bit more of the brown over here. Why am I picking certain spots? Well, my eye tells me to add a little bit of brown. Maybe when you're done, you're like, oh my gosh, I would like to have more red. Well, add more red. It don't you know. This whole thing about, you know, oh, I don't know, just try, just try. I mean, again, when it dries, you could go back in and add more, more color. I'm going to do a little bit of gray. All I'm doing is adding dimension, like Picasso did. Picasso had the brown, but if you look closely, there's brush strokes and stuff. We're doing watercolor, but I'm, I'm not sure if he used in that piece, um, acrylic or oil you know it was different times or you know now we have so many mediums that you know so many types of paints and so much stuff you could do another yummy yummy paint that i have that i'm going to share with you is <clears throat> a friend gave me these these are metallics they are exquisite let me show you the brand name they're delicious and they're gonna add a whole new dimension. So see in this color, it's like a rose gold. It's very close to that one. So I'm gonna come in and 
add a little sheen. You can't, maybe the camera won't pick it up, but it gives all the pieces a lot of dimension. I'm gonna add it there. I'm gonna add it here in this little corner to give it a little bit of color and texture, maybe over here. A tad over here. See how it starts coming together? Now, the only thing that bothers me from this whole piece is this negative space. It bothers me, but I'm not gonna do anything about it because I think I need to be out of my comfort zone. Proud it, of you. It's okay. Yes. It's okay to have a little bit of negative negative space. Plus, it gives me a place to sign my name. <laughs> sign my name on the piece. What I am gonna do is just give it a little bit more color and let the, um, so it has a little bit of texture. But I'm not gonna add any more. Um, I'm gonna refrain. See how I'm going back in and the parts that I'm gonna let the paper, the texture of the paper come through. Um, I'm kind of vibing on that today. Another day, maybe not. But today, I am vibing on that. She, because I think it's a she, is exquisite. See how it gets that wood tone, almost like a like antique. Okay, one more little splash of gold, only because I am obsessed with these paints. I think they're delicious. Again, you don't need to spend a lot of money on paints, but I do suggest you try to get high pigment because then you can get you can obtain you know a nice level of, of color. This is just so that the light bounces, so. I'm pretty much done. What, the only other thing I may do is, again, go back to the black and reinforce again the lines. I just think they're yummy. I think they're yummy, um, me personally. And it just makes the whole piece pop I like it. You need to give somebody a gift for Christmas, somebody that has everything, that enjoys art. Take a chance. Make them a piece. Pop it into a frame with a nice mat. And let me tell you, people just, the fact that you took the time to make art for them, that's very powerful. Okay, I think I'm done. I think she's lovely. Um, I encourage everybody to experiment and take the time to learn new techniques and, and just have fun, you know, de-stress from your ordinary everyday things that you do. You could take this, you know, if you're going to go travel or, or, or just even go to a park, you know, and just take time for yourself and have some fun and enjoy new things. So, all right, everybody. So, um, I'll see you next week. I'll bring you a new project and we can play together. So remember to hit uh, the thumbs up and um, hit the like and subscribe. And thank you so much for joining me. Happy holidays.